So I have a surprise for you, uh, which is that uh, we are going to be awarding a million dollars to uh, randomly to people who have signed the signed the petition every day from now until the election. So, you know, one, one of the challenges we're having is like, well, how do we get people to know about this petition? Because the legacy media is won't report on it. You know, not everyone's on X. So, uh, so I figure, how do we get people to know about it? Well, this news, I think, is going to really fly. <laughs> so... So every day between now and the election, we'll be awarding a million dollars, starting tonight. All right. So, uh, tonight's person is John Dreyer. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's bad. Thank you. So, uh, uh, by the way, uh, John had no no idea. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, you're welcome. Uh, and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, so the, the, the only, the only, th the only thing we ask uh, for the million dollars is that you be a spokesperson for for the petition, and uh, that's it, really. That's the whole. That's it. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. So wait, do you, do you want to say anything? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Th thanks, Elon. This is great. Uh, <laughs> I'm really ecstatic. Uh, I want to congratulate you on your uh, rocket catch last week. Big curve on that. <laughs> but yeah, I've been, I've been following you for, for 10 years. Got your uh, biography 10 years ago and uh, been watching ever since and big fan, so. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, cool. So. Yeah, so I think this is kind of fun. Um, and... Uh, you know, it's, uh, it seems, seems like a good use of money, basically. Uh, so, um, and, we, uh, we're, you know, we really need to, to go all out to protect the Constitution. Um, the Constitution is there for a reason. There was great wisdom in that, in that document. And, uh, and, and if, if, if anything, you know, if we, we, I just... Uh, it, it, is, it is what will save us from tyranny. And... Um, yeah. So. Well, let's see. So, um, <laughs> I don't actually have any, like, as, as you can see, there's no teleprompter or, or anything. I'm just like, what should I say next? I don't know. <laughs> uh, but, but uh, you know, the... It's, it's worth reiterating uh, why, um, why I'm, a, I'm supporting Donald Trump for president. Um, and, you know, there's... Uh, I, I, I think impo important things that, that need to happen. I mean, I think we, we want... We, we essentially want the sensible, basic things. We want safe cities. Uh, we want secure borders. Uh, we want, obviously, support for the Constitution. Uh, we, 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 you know, we want, I think... Uh, 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 less uh, gov government uh, sort of overreach, um, and you know, we, really, we I think we want to we want to restore freedom to the people, um, you know, so that your that your individual liberties are, are prized, and and you get to do what you want to do, um, and and you're not sort of overregulated to death, which is kind of what's happening, 
you know, it's, it's sort of shocking, but I think there's something like 428 uh, federal agencies. That, that's almost uh, two agencies per year since the founding of the country, um, and more being created. And so I, I call this like uh, a, a sort of strangulation by overregulation. Um, and uh, this is crazy. So I, I think with, with, the, with the Trump presidency, we have a real opportunity to um, uh, reduce the size of government, to uh, have a sensible regulation, and, and, uh, and, and really f uh, free the American people to do what they want to do. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure, like, these are sort of right-wing values. I don't, they seem like sensible values. Uh, they, I mean, like... In fact, I find it strange that these are even question marks, frankly. So, it's, 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 just, it's just, uh, just obvious things that, that should happen. Um, so... Well, you know what? Let, let's let's go straight into to Q and A because I feel like you know you've, you, a lot of things you've kind of heard before, or people out there have heard before. Um, you know, and if, if you know if I keep repeating myself, it's going to be kind of boring. So, better to have questions, and then the questions can lead to you know interesting discussions. Um, and uh, one. You know, note I should make with respect to, to questions or comments. Uh, the, the kind of questions or comments you want to have are things that you, that you think the public would be interested in hearing. So it's sort of, um, you know, what, what, what would people out there uh, be interested in, in hearing, um, hearing me answer or, or hearing you say? And uh, that, that's the way to kind of think about the, the framing of the questions. Please go ahead. Hey, Elon, BJ Wurzen, uh, absolute honor to meet you tonight. First, I just want to say thank you for your leadership. We all really appreciate what you're doing. It's absolutely amazing that you're even here, out here doing this. Absolutely. Well, uh, you know, uh, uh, I really appreciate that. I mean, the, the reason that I'm, I'm doing this is because I, I really think we're at a fork in the road of destiny, and this, this election is an absolutely crucial one. I haven't been, I have not been politically active before, and I'm politically active now because uh, every instinct that I have tells me that this, this is a fork in the road of, of destiny. Um, so so you, you obviously are interested in Pennsylvania, and there's even a rumor that you might want to invest in Pennsylvania. That's, that's, that's true, actually. I spoke with the, Yeah. So... Well... Um, my, well, my first question is, would you want to go halfsies with me on the Pittsburgh Pirates? <laughs> we could really piss off Mark Cuban. Now, now, the real question, yeah. you're, you're a numbers guy, you're, you're looking at the numbers. Yeah. What are you seeing here in Pennsylvania and others that's giving you encouragement, and what are you concerned about? Well, I, I'm, at, I'm very much encouraged by the enthusiasm that I see. Obviously, in, in, in the, you know, the crowd tonight, is incredible energy and enthusiasm. It's like, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's heartening. It's really heartening. It's, it encourages me, because sometimes, sometimes I wonder, is, is you know, is there enthusiasm? Is there energy to make things happen? Because sometimes, you know, like our biggest issue is often apathy. You know, is that is if, if the people that if, if the people that could vote just actually voted, then Trump would win for sure. You know, so 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 a lot of it is is I think convincing people who sometimes feel like the vote doesn't matter or it's all rigged or or whatever that that actually your, the vote does matter. Um, and if, if there's any election in, in their lifetime that they're going to vote, they should vote in this one. This one, it really is a big deal. So, you know, I, I, I really want to encourage people out there to, to you know, th this, this, is, this is a one-time ask. Just go out there and talk to your friends and family and acquaintances and people you meet in the street and, and, and convince them to vote. Make, obviously, you've got to get registered, make sure they're registered, and then and make sure they vote. Um, this, this, this one, this is a big one. This, this, this is a really big one, and I've never said that before. So, I, I, 
this, this one, you've got to go all out, you know, all out. Yeah. Elon, I'm Senator Greg Rothman. Welcome to Central Pennsylvania. We're so glad you're here. Thank you. So, so you've been in Pennsylvania at least the last week or so. Um, anything surprises you about this state and uh, our Commonwealth? What have well, you noticed? What have you seen sure. that, that's been a surprise to you? Well, you know, I, I, I did live here for three years. Uh, so I'm not like a total stranger. Um, I went to college in Pennsylvania. So, uh, you know, I'm not like some, you know, guy who just, like, what is the state? What's it like? I, I lived here for three years. <laughs> so, um, no, it's a, it's a, a fan, you know, it's a, it's a great state. I really enjoyed my time here. And um, it's a... Uh, and, 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 I, and I think, actually, Pennsylvania is, it really, it's the linchpin in this election, you know? And uh, it's a, so, it's, uh, the, how, how Pennsylvania goes, I think, is how the election goes. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Elon, my name's Chandi. I'm one of the pastors here. Thank you for hosting your town hall here at Life Center in Pennsylvania. Absolutely. My question for you is, would you hold an official position in the Trump administration? If so, what would it be? Would you create a new role for you to help save our nation? Well, um, yes. So I, 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 and, and I've had many conversations with President Trump, um, who is very much uh, aligned in, in thinking that we need significant government reform. Um, we, we need to get, get the government out of people's lives, really. Um, <laughs> And, 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 and have America be the land of liberty, which is, all, it, that, that's, that is what has made America great, is the, is the land of liberty and opportunity. You know, so you, ha, you maximize people's personal freedom um, and, 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 and we make sure that uh, getting ahead is a function of, of, of hard work and talent um, and, you know, an honest day's work. That's really what should get people ahead. And that's the only thing, you know, so. Hello, Elon Jarrell with Genuine Assets. Um, welcome to Pennsylvania again. Um, my, my question for you, um, Elon, is um, the biggest obstacle that you've had in life and how you turn that obstacle into an opportunity. Okay, I'll get it. Well, I guess I've, I've had a lot of obstacles. Um, I, I, I certainly didn't expect to, you know, be... Get get the things done that I that I have gotten done. I, I quite frankly I, I expected failure, um, so it was really just that, that I wanted to be to do something that was as useful as possible. I wanted to be as useful as possible, um, and um, that 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 was it really. So I I didn't even really actually originally intend to even start a company. I, I tried to get a job at Netscape after. Uh, <laughs> Graduating from Penn, <laughs> and uh, I, you know, Mark Andreessen is a friend of mine, uh, and uh, but they didn't they didn't re respond to my uh, my resume that I mailed in. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll try writing software in my when I, I'm, I've been writing software since I was a kid, so I'll, I'll write some internet software and and see if I can do some useful you know applications on the internet. And I ended up sort of writing the first uh, maps and directions and yellow pages and white pages on the internet back in '95. And, um, and that, it was just really because nobody would give me a job on the internet. Uh, so that, that was it. I, if they'd given me a job, I, I guess I would have just worked at Netscape or something. Um, but I, I, my, my best advice really is just like, you know, try to do uh, an honest day's work and try to be as useful as possible to your fellow human beings. Um, you know, try to uh, give more than you take. And, um, I just have a lot of respect for people who do an, an honest day's work, you know? That, that's what really matters. So. How's it going, Elon? Good to see you. Um, my name's Josh. Um, I'm worried about kids um, in a big way. Um, I uh, grew up in uh, Wyoming County, up north, small town area, real conservative. Um, got a education at Penn State, economics, and it really turned me um, 
away from my father and our small business that we had, I was basically raised to take it over. And uh, I did once I graduated, but it kind of imploded afterwards, about a year. Um, and I, I moved to California, and I, I didn't know what really happened. We got in a big argument, and I just, I had to go. You know, it was freeze, so flight happened next. Um, ex uh, explored uh, homosexuality, considered uh, transitioning uh, to a female, and... Wow, this is quite the journey. Yeah, and I think that there's... Uh, there's a big problem with uh, education that is having people, I guess my question is, what are other things we can do besides the impact uh, that we can have on the Department of Education to help confuse children that are trying to know who they are and how they can fit into their community and be productive? Sure. Yeah. Well, I, I think I think there's 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 well what I think I mean what I see is that there's there's like a tremendous amount of propaganda being pushed on kids in schools, um, and uh, it's uh, it's it's I think it's just messing with, with with kids' heads, you know. I mean, anyone that goes through puberty, it's it's a, it's going to be an identity crisis, you know. If you're going through puberty, you're like it's normal kind of to have an identity crisis, really. Um, and I think we should, tell, you know, tell kids like, yeah, you know, if you're, if it's, if you're confused, that's that's okay. It's like, it's it's coming of age, you know. Um, but we we shouldn't like steer them in a particular direction, uh, or convince them of something that's that they're not. Um, it, it's it's just it's okay to go through an identity crisis. Everyone does. Um, and. Uh, but I think w what I see in, in schools is that they, they, they tend to send kids down paths that they, they, that, you know, they wouldn't actually go down because they're being pushed down that, by, that, that way by the teachers you know, and by the propaganda that's pushed in the schools. So, I, th I think it's, we need to tell kids it's okay to, to live with uncertainty. That it's that it's normal to have uncertainty, um, and it'll it'll settle it'll settle down over time, and um, you know, and, and don't make any permanent decisions. You know, like decisions that can't be reversed uh, can't be reversed. So you know, I'm, I, I think we we definitely should not have any any sort of sterilization of kids. You know, below 18, that's no good. Um, That, that there's an age of consent for a reason. Um, and, you know, we don't let kids get tattoos until they're 18, and we don't, you know, alcohol is technically illegal until 21, although that's often, <laughs> you know, observed in the breach. Um, so, but, but we just want people to um, not make decisions when they're young that make them unhappy as an adult. That's really what it comes down to, and I think you want to say we, we want to optimize for people's long-term happiness, um, and and that but that means like making sure, like I said, that, that there are no irreversible changes during a, a, a kid when a kid has an identity crisis, which every kid has, and that's totally cool. And so my yeah, my opinion is we should just t tell kids if you know, when they're going through puberty and an identity crisis, that's totally normal. And don't get too stressed about it. Um, and things will settle out how they settle out. And, um, you know, that's the right thing to do. Uh, hello, thank you very much, Mr. Elon Musk. Uh, my name is Lenka White. I'm a legal immigrant from the Czech Republic. Uh, we are all very grateful for X. I think it's the only platform where we can find the truth. And not only here in the United States, but in places like Europe. My question is, what is your vision on the future of the media under Harris versus under Trump? How it would look like? And can the legacy media still earn the trust back? And what would happen to X, of course? Thank you so much. Sure. Well, 
No, it's a, it's a, it's a great question because I, the, the, there's, a, there's a, I mean, there's, um, I, I think what we'll see is uh, a lot of censorship under the, the, sort of the a Kamala reg regime. Um, you know, Kamala is really just, she's just a puppet, frankly. I mean, you know, if the teleprompter breaks, she doesn't know what to say. So, I, it's, you know, I, I just call it the, the, the machine, you know, the, the kind of big government machine, essentially. Um, and you sort of have a face on the big government machine, and, and, and when, 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 the, when the Biden puppet had, you know, was not working out, they, they sort of got a new puppet. Uh, but it's still the same machine obviously. And it's extremely undemocratic what was done. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's bizarre and hypocritical to claim that Trump is somehow a danger to democracy when what happened with Biden being removed as the candidate was incredibly undemocratic. Uh, yeah. So it doesn't make sense. Um, but but there's, there's, there's clearly a strong, a strong push uh, for censorship under the guise of fighting uh, disinformation. Um, and, uh, but, but really, disinformation is a propaganda word. Uh, it, it's, it's not a, it, it's, well, who's, who's going to decide what's disinformation? The government? That's crazy, you know? So, that, that's, it's, you know, yeah. So, I, I think we'll see, um, a, a, this is a, like a, a very, this is why I, I, you know, we have this petition in support of freedom of speech and right to bear arms, is that it's, it's under siege. It's being attacked. Um, but really, we should, we should have the free marketplace of ideas. People can propose an idea, they can, you know, the, the people can discuss an idea, and, the, and um, they can make, make a statement, people can rebut that, they can, you can have, you know, the sort of, the, the, the people can decide. Um, and, you know, I, I think it's, it's far better for information to uh, sort of bubble up from the, the voice of the people than to be decided by a handful of editors and chiefs of, of newspapers. Um, you know, that's, yeah. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the sort of, the, the biggest point of manipulation that occurs in the media is is not when the media says something that's uh, false or, or misleading, but because they, well, they do that, but, uh, but their choice of narrative, what are they going to talk about, is uh, that that's, by, by choosing to focus on one thing and not focus on another thing, that they're sort of steering uh, what, what information the public receives. Um, whereas uh, I think the right thing is that the, the narratives that are important should be the narratives that the people as a whole think are important, not what a, you know, a, a, a few a media oligarchs think is important. So, yeah. But uh, they, they, sort of, they sure like controlling information. So I, I, I think we're, if, if, if uh, if, if, if the Kamala machine wins, uh, then uh, we'll, we'll see, uh, I think, severe censorship is what's going to happen. And that's why I think this is the last election. Yeah. Thanks to you, Kamala is not going to win. Uh, I'm Chad. <laughs> My name is Chet Byler. I'm from right here in central Pennsylvania, and I, I don't think that was an overstatement. Thanks to you, Kamala will not win. I have two questions regarding the election itself and what you believe can be done to create not only a victory, but a, a strong victory. Yes. I'm now convinced that, again, thanks to you, we're going to sweep the seven uh, states that we must win. But I also hope we could pick up New Hampshire, New Jersey, and Virginia. So I wonder what your thoughts are as to how decisive the victory could be. And then number two, as was referenced earlier, we and all of America is very enthused about you working with Donald Trump to make our government appropriately smaller and more yeah. effective. Yeah. So, because that message is so compelling, I wonder if 
your super PAC could be a little more clear sure. about that point as it relates to you affecting that upgrade to this great country. Uh, certainly, I'm, I'm happy to clarify that. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, I, I think it's, I, I'm not, a lot of the things I say, I feel like I'm just stating the obvious, but, but sometimes the obvious isn't what happens, or um, is that if, if America is not strong, um, if the West is not strong, then nothing else matters. You know, like, uh, you know, the, the companies that I run, they, they don't matter. Like, it, basically, if, if, like, America is the central pole holding up the tent that is Western civilization. And if that, if that pole fails, nothing else matters. So nothing else matters. So, you know, I, I've try, I, and I've tried to encourage a lot of people in you know, business and technology to say like, hey, don't, you just got to think long term. You don't, you don't even need to be altruistic. You just got to think long term and say, if, if America fails, what good is your business? It doesn't matter. So America must be strong. The, and and the, the central pole that holds up the town of Western civilization must be firm as an oak. So... Hi, Elon. My name is Jocelle, and thank you for saving free speech. My, uh, my question is, what would you expect to see when you head the Government Efficiency Department? What are your strategies and priorities to curb government spending? Well, um, I've had some exposure to uh, government spending uh, because, uh, you know, SpaceX uh, has, d does have a lot of government contracts. You know, does a lot of work for NASA and for um, uh, DOD, Intel, and whatnot. And so I, I've, I've actually seen just the level of waste that, that happens. And if, and if you talk to people in the government, they, they actually agree, yes, this is very wasteful and inefficient. And I'm like, well, why don't we do something about it? <laughs> and, but, but really, in order to do something about it, it has to be a mandate from the top. And if, if, if the president is, you know, if we have a great president like, like Donald Trump, uh, who, who's willing to make major changes, and, and, and it's difficult because the system will fight you. You know, the system's not going to be like, oh yeah, no, totally, uh, we're, we're totally happy uh, being smaller. <laughs> that, that will not be, that, like, the, the, the sort of antibody reaction of the system will be quite severe. Uh, you know, they, they, I don't think it's going to be, they're not going to, you know, like it, basically. Um, so, but you have to have that mandate from, from the president. And we need a real president, not a puppet, you know. You know, the, 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 the thing, that, the thing that, that, that scares the system, that scares the machine, is that Donald Trump is not a puppet. He's a real person, you know. And he's not beholden to anyone. And, and uh, that's why you see sort of, you know, they're, they're trying to kill him, <laughs> you know? And, uh, you know, I, I, I mentioned as a, as a joke, I meant it as a joke, um, that, that no one's even bothering to try to kill Kamala. Uh, <laughs> you know, because there's no point. There's no point, is what I'm saying. Just get another puppet, you know? Um, so I, I'm, I'm not suggesting someone should try to kill her, it's pointless. Um, but I'm just saying, I'm just making an observation. Nobody's bothered. Why is that? Because it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Assassinating a puppet is pointless. <laughs> so, yeah. Hi, Elon. I'm Chad Wick from Westchester, Pennsylvania. And uh, I think more, more people are voting for Trump than ever before. It's historically been Democratic. I wear my Trump hat and walking around, people come up to me all the time, all races, all sexes, and they're like, cheers, let's go. Let's and go. I was just like, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> MAGA. Exactly. All right, so. MAGA, yeah. loud and proud. Let's yeah, yeah, go. Yeah. Uh, I, I encourage people to put uh, Trump Vance signs on their lawn and uh, wear a MAGA merch. Uh, because a lot of it is like people, you know, a lot of people like they will like, they, they actually would like to. Uh, support Donald Trump, but they, they, they aren't sure if anyone around them does too, and, and a lot of people, so you, you got to sort of, 
you know, if, if you sort of kind of plant the flag, then, then people are like, yeah, you know, I see other people are doing it, then I, maybe I will too. So, 100%. yeah, thank you for doing what you're doing. 100%. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for standing up for Trump and putting your voice out there because it's really important. See in your face, the richest person in the world, that's you. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you for that. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I just I, I, I built some companies that are to do a lot of useful things, and as a result, the stock's worth a lot. So that's, that's kind of what happens. It's like, you know, um, but on, on, in terms of personal expenditures, I, I, I do not live a particularly, you know, I don't have like a yacht or, any, or islands or anything like that. I just work, you know. So. Good evening, Elon. My name is Jared. It's a pleasure and honor to meet you here in Pennsylvania. And it's an honor and pleasure to meet all you guys. Yeah. You guys rock. I mean, this is, this is fire. I mean, seeing the level of enthusiasm is just, I mean, it's, it's, this is firing me up big time. This is awesome. That's it. Yeah. Me too. USA. <laughs> USA, absolutely. I have a two-part question, part A. Okay. I admire your authenticity, as well as Donald Trump, and truly wanting to make America great again, giving up whatever you need to just do the right thing, even if it's unpopular. Yeah. With all the government spending that you keep talking about on X, do you believe that, in combination with the Department of Government Efficiency, with Donald Trump's policies, do you think we can reduce the U.S. national debt that's currently at under $36 trillion? And part B... Yeah. Is that we after you do it? We, we have to. Yeah. Like, if we, if we don't do something about the debt, it's going to be, like, th this is like, for some reason, you know, just the legacy of mainstream media just ignores the fact that America is going bankrupt like crazy. It's like at a rate that is unprecedented. Um, and the, 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 the reality is that all government spending is, is, uh, is taxation. So even, so people I think, well, there's, there's government spending and taxation are somehow separate, but they're not. All government spending is taxation because the deficit is what results in inflation. And, and so and inflation is a de facto tax because it, it, it causes you know, all prices to rise and makes you know, people trying to just live their lives have a lot of difficulty. Uh, but in, inflation throughout history has been used as a pernicious tax because cause it, cause it's like it's one degree removed. So people don't f feel it directly. They sort of... And, and then the politicians will try to blame it on something else, but it's all about government spending. If it, it, government spending is what drives inflation. So if it, the, the, the key is we've got to reduce the government spending, um, and uh, if we don't, we're going to go bankrupt as a country. End of story. Just like a person. You know, if, a, if a person spends beyond their means, mm -hmm. they go bankrupt. And, and we're spending beyond our means, and, and we're spending on uh, like silly stuff that doesn't actually benefit the public. Correct. Yeah. And part two to that, I believe you're going to do that with Donald Trump. I'm just telling you that. It's not if, it's when, because I am confident you and Donald Trump are going to truly make America great again. Well, thank you, but I, I, I do want to caution against, against complacency is the only right, thing. Correct. So it's like we just right. need to be super hardcore right. about getting every possible vote. Confidence, yep, not complacency. Please. Yes, exactly. We want to be confident, but not, not complacent. Correct. And uh, so that's why it's like we've got to just be total evangelists mm -hmm. about the voting. Yep. Um, and, and, and really, every vote counts, and just make sure everyone you know is registered. The deadline for registration in, in Pennsylvania is... Monday. Mi yeah, midnight Monday. Like, you can register online. It's super easy, um, but, like, hound everyone you know to get registered, because after, after uh, mid midnight on Monday, you can't, it's, it's no good. And this is a silly question, but when you cut the government spending and all, you have a stack of all these deregulations, can you live stream on X and use not a yeah. flamethrower and burn that yeah. to the ground. Yeah. Great idea. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think, I think a, 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 bon, a bonfire of nonsense re regulations would be epic. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes people, sometimes people are concerned, like, well, what if there's some regulation that's actually uh, really important, and uh, and we get rid of that, and say, well, you know what? We'll put it right back. <laughs> Problem solved. <laughs> so, all right. Well, Mr. Moroska, thank you for speaking directly with the voters of the United States. It's a pretty great view. 
Uh, yeah, absolutely. Removing yourself from the equation, um, what does it say about the Biden-Harris administration and the would-be Harris administration that, she ha that they haven't worked with such great um, American companies such as SpaceX, Twi uh, Tesla, and then even speak out against X? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty weird. Um, you know, uh, yeah, because it, it, it was kind of, so kind of a surprise because it's like, you know, Biden, you know, for, for example, had that like electric vehicle summit at the White House six months after getting inaugurated and specifically excluded Tesla, even though Tesla makes more electric cars than ever. Yeah, it was, it was not cool. Um, uh, and, and, and then credited GM with driving the electric vehicle revolution. And in the same, that was a second event. And then in that quarter, GM shipped 26 electric cars and Tesla shipped 300,000. <laughs> so I'm like. And, and, you know, Tesla's at this point about 140,000 people. It's, it's really, it's like. There's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears from 140,000 people working hard to, to make great, great electric cars. Um, and, uh, you know, to be sort of cold-shouldered like that for no reason, it's like, wh what's the deal, you know? That was wrong. So, um, yeah, and, and then there was like that crazy thing where SpaceX competed for the Rural Broadband Initiative, uh, which, and, and, and by the way, I'm actually generally a, a, against subsidies and incentives. Uh, you know, like, we should let tax, taxpayers keep their money, is, is my opinion. But, but they had this, like, $42 billion thing, and we competed, and, and we won. And, and we, they, we, we would have actually uh, been able to supply a lot of uh, stalling terminals to the states that were affected by the hurricanes. Um, and uh, they, they, they revoked the award. It's messed up. Like, why? Um, and, and, then, and then, to date, that $42 billion program, total number of... of, of citizens that have received broadband from that $42 billion allocation is zero. Now that's, if, if you want to see $42 billion for zero, <laughs> I would call that waste. Yeah, that's waste. <laughs> that is not a good use of money. Um, you know, so uh, there, there was also a big government initiative uh, I think seven billion dollars, something like that, for a nationwide ne network of electric superchargers, and I think they they, they had made like ten. Um, and I'm like, this is the most egregious waste of money, and, and there's so many situations like that. So, um, you know, it, it, it just goes like bureaucrats and consultants, and nothing gets done, and and, and it's, it's wasting your money, uh, which is crazy. So, I. What I'm saying is like this, there's the opportunity to reduce government waste uh, is, is actually, I think, easy because there's so much of it. You know, it's, it's, it's not like, it, it's, they just don't care about your money, which is messed up. And so, uh, so I think the Department of Government Efficiency is going to face a target-rich environment for reducing costs. Hi, Elon. Um, I've been waiting years for you to join the MAGA movement, so we're so glad you did. Yeah. Um, I guess my question is, um, you keep repeating that most of these things we believe in are common sense, and I really feel like they are. Yeah. Um, do you have any woke friends, and how do you deal with them? Well, I, I mean, I have been red-pilling my friends like crazy lately. Um, so, uh, I've, I've fewer and fewer uh, woke friends. Um, at least, they, they're still friends, but they're not woke. Um, so, you know, they, um, I, I think where, you know, where the sort of, in, in, in a, the sort of good interpretation of the, the woke movement is, is that we want to have empathy for our fellow human beings. And of course we want to have empathy for our fellow humans. I, I strongly, strongly believe we should care about Humanity, and we should care about the future. Uh, but but the, but but we we need to have empathy that is deep, not shallow. Um, you know, shallow empathy is caring about cr criminals, uh, but but deep empathy is caring about the, the victims of the criminals. 
you know? And so, um, you know, why, why do we have, uh, you know, violent, repeat violent offenders released on the streets, often with no bail? It's crazy. And they prey upon people, innocent people, you know? And, and then our streets are not safe. And, and how can America be the greatest country in the world and we don't even have str safe streets? You know, this is crazy. Um, you know, I was talking to my mom and, and she was saying like just this year, like three, three of her friends have been assaulted in New York. You know, and, and, it's, and I said, well, was anyone arrested? No. Uh, they didn't even try. This is, we can't have this. You know, people deserve to, to you know, have safe cities and, and secure borders and the basic stuff like that, you know. Um, yeah, so I think, I think it's, I, I do feel that there, there's, there's a shifting of, of, of you know, of shifting of perception. Um, and uh, I, I think we, I, th I think, I hope I'm not being too optimistic, but, because um, I'm a naturally optimistic person, obviously. Um, but I, I do feel as though that there's a shift in the national mindset. Um, and uh, a shift to, to, more se to, to just common sense and, 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 and not believing everything that the, the media uh, tells you. Um, and and I, I think actually it, 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 in, in the U.S. people are, are starting to realize that, you know, the, the legacy media is just a propaganda machine. Um, and uh, in, 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 in Europe, they still believe the, they still believe the news. <laughs> so so we've got to work, we got to work on Europe. They, they, still think, they still think the news is real. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, here, uh, you know, th thanks to X and, 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 and just, you know, people being, I think, maybe a bit more aware and having, and having an actual uh, free speech constitutional amendment um, is, is, it has helped Americans, uh, you know, understand what is, what is actually real. Um, and, uh, I mean, I do find it remarkable, like, the, um, it just, just how sort of coordinated the, the legacy media is uh, in, in, in their talking points. Um, it's absurd. Um, and and I, kudos to, to those who, who put together the compilations of, of, of you know, where, where all of the talking heads will say the same thing, <laughs> word for word. Yeah, and they'll, they'll, they'll say the exact same thing, and, and, and you know, I, but I mean, I think the propaganda is not even good, frankly. It's not even entertaining. Um, and, and, you know, so, you know, what, the week before uh, the Biden-Trump debate, you know, every uh, media organization was saying that uh, Biden shot his attack. You know, it was the exact same words. Shot his attack, shot his attack, over and over again. Then it became obvious to uh, the public that he was indeed not a shot his attack. Um, <laughs> And, and, but then immediately the legacy media pivoted to knifing, knifing Biden um, and anointing a successor. Um, so we see this over and over again. And um, yeah, so anyway, but that's why we need to have the voice of the people. Uh, and and, and that's, 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 you know, why I felt it was necessary to acquire Twitter and, and, and you know. The, the, like the, 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 whole, the whole point of acquiring Twitter was to restore the voice of the people. So. And, it, and it's important to note that, um, that while, while the, the, the far left activists that used to control Twitter obviously uh, did extreme censorship of voices on the right, there has been no censorship of voices on the left. That, you know, they, they suspended this, a sitting president, uh, you know, sus Twitter suspended a sitting president, which is insane. Um, and, but th there's been no suspension or censorship or shadow banning or anything of anyone on the left. So, you know, it's a level playing field. But, but I, I, I think that the, 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 re the reason that you see that, that um, the sort of far left activists want unanimity in, in all social media platforms and in all uh, uh, legacy media is that their ideas do not stand the light of day. That is the reason.
they, they, don't, they, they, don't, they actually don't stand up. And so unless everyone is parroting the same thing, um, their ideas will fail. So. Um, hello, Mr. Musk. My name is Zeon Thomas, and you know, I was gonna ask for a million dollars, but my parents told me to keep it professional, so. <laughs> Well, it's, it's actually still possible that you may w win that, and if it's, so. Um, but, yeah, so, you taking over Twitter was awesome. Um, I want to know what other radical ideas you have to save our nation uh, while working with Trump. Yeah. Well, I, I, I try to be as literal, literal as possible, so, you know, the... The, uh, the values stated on the um, Ad America, you know, the America Pack uh, website um, and uh, X account, uh, I try to be just as straightforward and literal as possible, you know? So that's why it's sort of safe cities, secure borders, sensible spending, um, you know, protect the Constitution, uh, especially the right to free speech. Um, and uh, these are all, like I said, things that seem very obvious and, and frankly normal. Uh, and, but they're not being done. And, and they're in, in uh, severe danger if uh, the Kamala machine wins. Hi, I'm Mickey, and I've been working with voter registration. And a lot of people are concerned about the escalation in the U.S. military in Israel, because there's over 100 troops there on land now. What do you think of this idea? A boring company offering to build an island off the coast of Israel and call it Palestine. They can finally have their nation state like Cyprus. It's been done in China, Dubai, and the Philippines, and we can finally end these endless wars. Could there be enough rubble in Gaza to do it? Thank you. Well, that, I mean, the Gaza is a thorny problem indeed. Um, you know, the, the, the Middle East has been uh, an area of contention, well, for thousands of years. Um, I, I would, I would uh, say that I do, I do not know the solution to that difficult situation there. Um, so uh, I'm not sure there, there, there is. I'm not sure there is a good solution. There may be, but the, the, but I, I think we we need to make sure that America is is solid. Like so, I, I'm I'm like let's just make sure America is 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 strong and. Uh, you know, there's, I, I mean, I, I do think we, we interfere too much in, in what other countries do. Um, and, uh, and, 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 and a lot of our attempts at regime change, in fact, our, the success of, this, of, of you know, the State Department in achieving regime change is terrible. I mean, you know, so there's all this uh, effort spent, uh, all this money spent uh, trying to affect regime change in various countries. Uh, but uh, failed in Cuba, failed in Iran, failed in North Korea, uh, failed in Russia. Who was what? Wait, where were the successes? Uh, but we, but we, we, a lot of people died, um, and a lot of money was spent, um, and and but no, what good has come of it? Um, so I think we should interfere with other countries a lot less. Hi, Elon. My name's Luke. I'm a local liberty, liberty lover who lives just across the river, actually. Um, I find the idea that um, basically everything that we care about is dependent on a single federal election to, for lack of a better word, be unacceptable. So um, what, I've, um, what I and some colleagues of mine have, ta have talked about is decentralization and localism, specifically nullification at the state and local level of the federal leviathan. Yeah. Um, at the state level, uh, the Tenth Amendment Center has done great work. The basis of nullification is the Tenth Amendment, the idea that no power is... No, anyway. and, uh, I mean, I, I agree the federal government should get off people's backs. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and do, do you believe that nullification is a viable path forward to getting that done? Well, I can't speak to the, whether that is legally would legally stand up or not. I mean, um, but I, I think if there's an executive branch, um, and, and we also need to, you know, try to win the Senate and the House, uh, but if there's, if there's, you know, a, a cons consensus that, that the federal government uh, 
should do less um, and restore power to the states and to the communities, which I think should be the case, uh, then, then I think we can make that happen. Yeah. Hi, Elon. My name is Edward. And one of the really great things about going to these rallies are the people that you meet. Tuesday of the J.D. Vance rally, I spoke to some young students and they wanted to be healthcare professionals. And the hardest thing for them to deal with was the financial obligations of doing it, trying to get an apartment and everything else. And uh, I mean, I went to Germany and college is free over there. So there's no one in the world that can tell me that America can't do it better. Well, can, can you help those Rileys of the world out, please? Well, I, I think that there are a lot of issues with, with college education. It, it's gotten very expensive uh, because the administrative uh, portion of, of colleges and universities has grown dramatically compared to the educational portion. So if you say, like, how much is actually spent on teaching people? Very little. So, so the, you know, and so I, I think that you've got these 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 sort of administrative groups that are that far outnumber the actual number of professors, um, and and like the, there isn't actually a need for college to be so expensive. It it, it should be uh, far less expensive, but uh, the, the sort of bureaucratic creep and the administrative burden have grown dramatically over time, um, and that is what has caused college to be so expensive. It's, it doesn't make any sense. So, yeah, um, but, but, but there, there is, I mean, if, if, we, if we do sort of make college free, we have to be careful about that because it, 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 then it's open season for wasteful spending at universities. Um, and like the, then, however bad it is now, there's gonna be even worse in the future. Um, I, I, think, I think we need uh, new universities uh, to compete with the existing ones. Um, because what actually matters is, the, is how good is your education, not how much was spent on administrative BS. You know? so. I, I, I also think that like, the, the, the value of a college education is, is somewhat overweighted. You know? And I, I, I think it's... Uh, too, too, too many people actually spend, spend four years, accumulate a ton of debt, and then don't often don't have useful skills that they can apply afterwards. And I think um, I have a lot of respect for people who work with their hands and uh, we, we need elect, elect, electricians and plumbers and uh, carpenters and, you know, that, that's, that's a lot more important than having incremental poly, political science majors, uh, I think. Um, you know, so it, I, I think we should just not have this idea that that uh, to be successful, you need to have a four-year college. That, that is simply not true. Hello, Elon. My name is Beam. It's a pleasure to meet you. Um, my question is, as we near the election, um, I know you're covering a lot of ground, going to battleground states. Uh, how important do you, think, do you think ad buys will be this election? Because in 2020, Mike Bloomberg, we know, spent a vast amount of money trying to get Biden into the White House. So are you looking into that? And... Yeah, that's my question. Well, actually, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, the, the amount of money spent on advertising in the battleground states is truly staggering. And, and in fact, uh, the, the uh, Democrats are outspending Republicans dramatically. Um, depending on how you count it, I think it's like two or three times uh, more money is being spent by uh, Democrats than Republicans. Uh, and in, in addition, they have the legacy media on this side, and they have a whole bunch of Hollywood celebrities on this side. So it's remarkable that this election is uh, in contention at all given that they have really, uh, you know, all, all that on their, on, on their side. Um, so, uh, but, but I guess you've got you, you to reach people with a message somehow. Um, so I think probably, you know, we, we do need to do more advertising, uh, just so that people will hear the message. Um, but but in, in my opinion, the thing that's actually most important is uh, is, is, is getting friends, family, acquaintances, um, anyone you run into, to register to vote and then to actually vote. So, it's, and, and this, this, this election could be decided by, you know, a thousand people, a hundred people, it could be a very tiny margin. So, every incremental person makes a difference. 
Um, and, and I've seen some, some pretty wild numbers where there's, and I think even right now, there's a, there's a, a lot of people that have re requested, a lot of Republicans that have requested absentee ballots, but they have not mailed them in. I'm like, guys, mail it in, come on. Just mail in your ballot, you can do it. <laughs> you, you have it in your house. <laughs> mail it in. Now would be a good time. <laughs> and if you're worried about the mail, you can bring it in person. <laughs> so, uh, I, I, yeah. I, I think it's very important to encourage people to, to, to vote. Like, like I said, I, I'm, hammer, I'm really emphasizing this registration point because it's, we've only got a couple days left uh, for registration. Um, so that, that's why it, it's the, top, the top priority is, is, is get, get people registered before Monday night and, uh, and, and then make sure they, they vote. Um, and, and I would recommend voting early. Um, and then you can check to see if, if your, your vote's been received. Uh, you know, it's, it's, that's, uh, you, 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 I think, there's, there should be a lot more Republicans voting early. Yeah. Hi, Ms. Hi, Mr. Musk. It's a pleasure to be able to speak to you. Uh, thank you so much for pushing the world forward in every industry. And I'm sure you'll be doing the same now in politics. So my question is, given the recent hacking of Donald Trump, how important do you think it is for the tech industry and government to back platforms that prioritize privacy and secure communications, such as Signal, and do you see an opportunity for your companies to partner with this platform or to better protect user data or even safeguard government communications? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's, there's always this debate between, uh, you know, privacy and security. Um, but I think the bias should be towards uh, privacy. Um, you know, I, I, I think we should not trust the government, uh, really. Um, and um, we, we just shouldn't. So, and, and I'd say, even if, even if I'm in the government, don't trust the government. <laughs> like, that's, uh, it's just, you know, we, we, we've, we've got to protect uh, the privacy of, of citizens uh, and, and uh, you know, and, and make sure that, that, that people really have their liberty and they're not being spied on or, you know, manipulated. So, um, you know, yeah. So... I, I, I think we, we need to make sure that there are not like back doors and, 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 and weird things and that, that where, where the government can, you know, spy on and, and potentially, uh, you know, take action against people. Yeah. Hey, Elon. Uh, my name's Ron Blauk. I'm from Harrisburg. Um, before I ask my election question, I just have to tell you that I accidentally caught the launch and catch of both sections of Starship on live. And it was breathtaking, which I know everyone in here knows, but I want you to or be acknowledged for the level of inspiration that you're creating worldwide. I was cheering in my office, like, watching right. this thing go down. And so, thank you for that. Yeah. No, you're most welcome. I mean, I think it's, it was, uh, it, yeah, I mean, it, it certainly inspired me, and, and that's, it's, uh, that's a testament to uh, the, the incredible work by the SpaceX team. Um, very talented, super hardworking team, um, and uh, you know the the making uh, rockets fully and rapidly reusable is really what's going to open up uh, space for humanity and enable us to have a base on the moon and build a city on Mars and be a space-bearing civilization. So the a lot of people don't realize like it, the difference between like an expendable rocket and a reusable rocket is like ten thousand percent. It's literally at least. You can think of it just the difference between, you know, what does it cost to, uh, you know, fill up, uh, you know, fill up a car uh, versus buy a car. That, it's the same difference for rockets. You know, do you, do you, if you have to, if a new rocket is needed every flight, uh, that's ex super expensive and difficult. But if you only have to refill the rocket, uh, it's dramatically cheaper, just like it is for a car or an airplane. Pulling that off and doing the catch and the landing in the ocean was just so stellar. <laughs> yeah. All right, so my, my question is on um, election night 2020, I sat down to watch the returns and I watched them steal the election. All right, I saw it live, watched it all night, okay? If you were watching it then, you knew at nine o'clock when Fox declared Arizona that it was going down, that that was the moment, okay. But even worse than that was over the next months watching the courts 
and the shenanigans in the courts and the lack of good representation that Trump had and just nothing happening because there was obviously a problem. Nothing was, seemed to be happening in the courts at all. And between that day and now, it doesn't look like anything has changed. And so we're about to, to I think the votes matter, but the count is what matters. And if the courts are corrupted, we're not going to get anywhere. And so do you have, are you participating in that? It seems as though you're aware of that. How can you help solve that issue so that we don't have that problem again? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, the, uh, if, if the margin of victory is high enough, then I think any, it, 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 it can exceed any, any sort of cheating that may take place. Um, so we've got to aim for at just a massive margin. That's the key. It's, it's really aim for a margin that it is impossible to have any sh shenanigans. Um, but, but on the X platform, we'll, I certainly would invite people to, uh, you know, if, if there's any uh, voting uh, issues, uh, you know, if, if they feel think there's a fraud, then, they, then post the images, post the videos, post the evidence. Um, and, and let's shine a bright light on, on, and the brighter the light, the harder it will be to cheat. Hi, Elon. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Thank you for the work you're doing for humanity. There are a lot of changes happening in our world right now, a lot of changes happening in our own country, and these changes are being perceived as chaos. Um, but I always say that if it wasn't for chaos, we wouldn't be able to experience peace. If it wasn't for chaos, we wouldn't be able to experience growth and evolution. And with AI being the new kid on the block and advancing at an incredible pace, I guess my question is, how do you foresee the election of President Donald Trump influencing technological advancements and um, societal transformation? Well, I, th I think the... Um Ha re reducing this sort of, you know, strangulation by overregulation uh, is a super big deal. Um, you know, the, our, our, the, the rocket that we were just talking about, um, it was sitting on the, on the launch pad for two months waiting for paperwork to be processed. And it's just insane that, uh, w that the SpaceX team can build a giant rocket faster than the government can move paperwork from one desk to another. <laughs> like... That's just crazy. And, and, and the problem is that's, that's getting worse and worse every year. So if that trend continues, it's just going to be illegal. You know, we just won't be able to get anything done. Um, so the, uh, this, uh, that's why I, I, I call it like this, 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 this extreme overregulation where there's just new agencies being created every year. Um, and, and the difficulty of getting anything done is like the square of the number of agencies involved. So if there's one agency, it's like one, but if there's like uh, three agencies, it's like nine times harder because they all have to meet with each other. Um, and, uh, you know, we get crazy things like SpaceX got fined $140,000 for dumping uh, potable drinking water on the ground uh, at, 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 at Starbase where we, where we launched the rocket. Because we, you know, we cool we cool the launch pad with with water, and in an excess of caution, we said, you know, we're, we're going to bring in drinking water just to be sure, um, and uh, and and we're going to cool the pad with that. We didn't know there was a like a permit needed for that. I, if, like, w water falls from the sky all the time. <laughs> you, you know, it, it, it Starbase is in a tropical thunderstorm area. It rains so much that the roads get flooded. Why are we getting fined? for a tiny amount of water on the ground. But the EPA said they're not going to process any future applications for launch unless we pay this fine. So we just got, you know, held for ransom, basically. And that's tip of the iceberg. Um, I mean, I got, I got a bunch of sort of n n nutty stories, you know. Uh, I, some of them are, I guess, are kind of funny. There's, um, you know, we had to do this, SpaceX had to do the study to see if, if uh, Starship would, would hit a shark. And I'm like, it's a big ocean, you know. Uh, there's a lot of sharks. It's not impossible, but it's very unlikely. And uh, and said, well, you have to, you know, this is I think from from National Marine Fisheries, one of the, you know, NIMF it's called. Um, 
Uh, and uh, you know, they were like, well, you have to do the study on whether you're going to hit a shark. We're like, what? Um, and, and then, like, then I, we said, okay, well, fine, we'll, we'll, we'll do the analysis. And then, well, can you give us the shark uh, data? They're like, no, we can't give you the shark data. We're like, okay, well, then we're in a bit of a quandary. How, how do we solve this difficult, this, this shark probability issue? Uh, and and that's, they said, well, um, well, we could give it to our Western division, but we don't trust them. And I'm like, am I in a comedy sketch here? Um, and then, like, like, they're worried about the shark density data, like the people who hunt sharks for shark fins somehow getting their hands on this shark dense, the shark data. And, and so eventually, I think we, 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 we got the data and, and we could, you know, run the analysis to say, like, yeah, the sharks are going to be fine. Um, but, but they wouldn't let us proceed with launch until we did this crazy shark data. And, and, they, and then we thought, okay, well, now we're done. And they said, but what about whales? I'm like, <laughs> when you look at a picture of the Pacific, what percentage of the surface area of the Pacific do you see as whale? Because <laughs> I see, look at a picture, I don't see any, it's like, you can't, where's a whale? And, and, and honestly, if, if the ship did hit a whale, it's like, honestly, that whale had it coming, because it's like, the odds are <laughs> so low. You know, it, 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 it's, it, it's like, like Final Destination, the whale edition. It's like fate had it in for that whale, I, you know. Um, and so we have to do the whale analysis. And it's like, okay, yeah, the whales will be fine too, you know. Um, it goes on and on, and then there's like, well, what if the rocket goes underwater, then explodes, and then the whales have hearing damage? Like, this is real. This is actually, and we're like, the, look, if we could make a rocket go underwater and be a submarine, that would be like a feat of physics we could not accomplish, okay? Uh, this, is, <laughs> this is not how it works. So, anyway, just one, like, crazy thing after another, uh, where... Um, you know, so this is why I like, I'm like really feeling the pain of the overregulation. Uh, and there's like multiple federal agencies that, that have overlapping, uh, you know, they're all doing the same thing, basically. So, um, anyway, we, we, we've got to stop this madness uh, because we, won't, we just won't be able to get anything done. Hi, Mr. Mas. Thank you so much for doing everything that you do to try to save our republic. I am a citizen journalist. I started Great. a small community newspaper in Strasburg, Pennsylvania, called the Strasburg Herald, uh, to fight the fake news. Great. That was in 2021. Since then, as you know, the um, as mainstream media is corrupt. I, fr I frankly feel threatened and they are sabotaging, the big tech companies are sabotaging, shadow banning, and redlining my content. Google, Meta, uh, Newsbreak. Sure. Right now, as I'm speaking to you, Meta is now allowing me to um, promote um, election ads. And I've given them everything that they needed. So my question to you is, would you consider establishing a citizen journalist association, an organization that could help us fight this giant beast that we can take on by ourselves and provide, provide training, a cut of ethics and protection so that we could get the work done? Yeah, I, no, I agree with you. The there the, the, the should not be uh, it should not be okay for for Google or Meta or anyone else to um, preferentially show uh, left-leaning um, media um, because then people how do people even know what's going on? Um, so you know, and it's 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 sort of yeah. I mean, the, the, apart from X, I mean, they're pretty much all all sort of controlled by left left-wing activists um, and and right, and then they. It, but, but that's obviously, you know, unfair. It's, so, uh, they, I think they should be compelled to show content from all sides. It shouldn't be, they shouldn't be allowed to put their thumb on the scale and, and with, with political bias. Because um, if, 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 if they are doing that, then they're entering the political game. And then they're subject to political punishment. Well, I think the... Ourselves. Yeah. But with lawfare, you know, they can shut us down with lawfare. They can sue us for any reason, and the burden's still going to be on us 
to protect ourselves, to defend ourselves. Yeah, I, I think that, that this is really a situation where, where, the, the, where the federal government should be saying that um, if, a, if a company has like 70% of the search market like Google does, uh, Microsoft's got most of the remaining 30%, um, it's a duopoly, uh, they, they, they have to be fair in, in what they show. They can't be biased. Um, because otherwise they're, they're, I think, falling afoul of antitrust, you know, so that's, uh, but, but I think if it's, if it's not done at the federal level, I think it's, it's it, it, you know, that, that, that's, the only, that's the only level where you can actually exert influence on giant companies. Um, and it's really just to say, like, hey, you've got to be fair and show, you know, the, um, and, and not, put, not put a political thumb on the scale. It's, it's not right. So, and, and, and there's, I'd say there's, there's another uh, big, big factor, which is that, that uh, the, the, there's a lot of, uh, the, 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 the advertisers also exert political pressure, which is, I think, not, not okay. So then they, they will, there's, you know, there's all these moves with these, like, fake NGOs uh, with nice-sounding names, like Center for Countering Digital Hate. Of course, who wants digital hate? Um, but actually, they're just a censorship, a left-wing censorship organization, um, and so they, they, they push these boycotts of, of any publication that doesn't support left-wing views. Um, and so they just try to starve out the, uh, any publications that have even sort of centrist views. So. Hi, Elon. I'm David Fox. I'm a, a husband, a father, a grandfather, a small farmer, a carpenter, a heavy metal musician. Excellent. A teamster truck driver with over a million miles of safe driving. Oh, you're a talented man. So, if you happen to know a guy who might need a secretary of transportation, you know, let me know. Okay. Uh, but anyway, I was supporting Trump since 2015. And we all know that the Democrats are gonna throw everything they got against you and against Trump. Yeah, I mean, that's are. just. That's just a given. 100%. But my question really is, what the worst part is the neocon, milk toast, naked Ken doll Republicans. Yeah. You know, which I stole that line from Jesse Kelly, if anybody yeah. knows. True. The, the, sort of uni, the, they, the, the uni party people. Right. I mean, it just seems like <laughs> they're the like, worst, <laughs> that they would be the, the worst. The fake Republicans. Yeah. yeah. They would be the worst threat to the agenda of anyone, because you already know what the Democrats are going to do. Yep. So, I don't think that those people know how much regular people like us despise those people. Yeah. I mean, they are, we've got to vote them out. Yes. You know, that's really what it is. And my question is, has there been any talk at all about what to do after we win with those yeah. people? You know, because we already, yeah. like I said, we already know what the Democrats are going to do, but what about you know, the Lindsey Grahams of the world, or the John Cornyns, or the Mitch McConnells, or, you know, because you know what they're going to say. Like, well, there's nothing we can do. You know, that's how they're going to act. Well, I, I think what we've got with, um, we've, we've really got a rare opportunity here with Donald Trump, who's a real person, who's not beholden to those interests. Um, because, uh, yeah, this is a, a rare kind of once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Because, um, uh, you know, very often, like, you think you're, you know, there's a difference between the Democrat candidate and the Republican candidate, but they're kind of like the uniparty. They're just one, they, they actually share, they're going to do the same thing. Um, so then, then if they're going to do the same thing, well, then voters don't, that's a fake, it's a fake choice. Um, but with Donald Trump, I think we've got an opportunity for someone who is his, his own man and who will, is not beholden to these interests, and we can affect some serious change. Well, hey, Elon, I know you have a burning question for me. If I'm Indian or Jamaican, I'm born in India. All right. <laughs> and, um, well, I was born in Africa. It's kind of weird, but... Oh, there you go. Uh, it's true. <laughs> so faith, family, and freedom are my guiding principles. What are your guiding principles? And as a divorced mom, I have a 14-year-old son and a 12-year-old daughter. So... Could you give them the best advice you could give them as an African-American? <laughs> sure. Um, 
Well, well, I mean, my advice is generally to try to, it, it's, it sounds maybe like a platitude, but it's really just, it's like try to be as useful as possible. Uh, try to give more than you take. And um, I think if you're doing an honest day's work, you should be very proud of that, and that, that, that's a great thing. Um, so, yeah. I struggle with mom jokes, so do you have a best dad joke for them? No, what I have is, I, do I, I mean, dad jokes. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess I probably, I, I, for some reason I can't remember any dad jokes right now. Um, I have one. I have yeah, one. exactly. I have one. Okay, okay. What do you call a hen looking at lettuce? I don't know. Chicken Caesar salad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, a, a friend did tell me a joke that was pretty good, which is, uh, it's, it's like, um, uh, my, my, my roommate uh, thinks I'm a paranoid, delusional, schizophrenic. Joke's on him, I don't have a roommate. <laughs> 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 so. Hi, Elon. Um, I'm Charles. Uh, I'm a Gen Zer, so um, I'm in college right now in Pennsylvania. Um, <laughs> a little nervous talking to the uh, richest man in the world, but I have a quick, quest quick financial question, actually. Like, you're <laughs> the richest man in the world, and you're the best person to talk to. So, um, I want to start a family in the next coming years. I'm a Christian man, and I, um, that's something I want to do. Great. But obviously with this, um, um, with our country's financial state right now, it's, a, it's really hard to get a house, um, let alone pay my uh, student loans. So um, I know the average age of getting a house right now is like 34. So what advice would you give to Gen Zers and younger people trying to build a family, trying to start a, um, a family and get a house? Uh, what advice would you have for that? And then, <laughs> I guess my... Uh, my I can uh, answer that question if you'd like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you got it. I mean, my recommendation really would be uh, do not delay having a family. Um, you know, even, even if things are tough, it's... it's uh, R really, like, like there's, a, there's a baby crisis. You know, the, the birth rate has, has plummeted. Um, you know, the, the, the birth rate in the United States has been below replacement rate since roughly when I was born in 1971. So that's a long time. Um, and it's continued to decline every year. So, uh, you know, I think we, if, if there's no, no humans, means no humanity. Uh, so we've, we, something's got to happen to turn around this crazy low birth rate or we'll simply disappear. Um, so, I, you know, I, I think even if things are financially difficult, uh, it, it's still, you know, go for it with regard to a family. And, um, and then regarding uh, housing costs, I think the, the, you know, th the thing that's, that's driving up uh, housing costs is this, the crazy over-regulation. It's like so hard to build new houses. Um, and, and, it's, and to meet all these regulations, uh, it's, it, the regulations stifle new housing uh, creation. So I think if we, if we can uh, alleviate the, 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 the crazy number of regulations for, for houses, still want to keep them safe, uh, then the, the cost of, of a new house should, should fall dramatically. So, and what was the second one? Uh, yeah, just one quick uh, serious question. Can I get a cyber truck? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. All right. <laughs> Hi, Elon. My name is Katie. I am an electrical engineer, and I have heard you in the past speak about uh, promoting STEM degrees as well as trade degrees, individuals who work with yeah. their hands into politics. Because, frankly, I'm really sick of seeing dumb people ruining our country. Um, and so, do you have any plans with Ameripa uh, America PAC to do that? Um, well... Yeah, I mean, I do think there's, we, 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 we need more of our talented people in, in America going into um, engineering and into uh, you know, technical trades and, and building things, essentially. Um, we, we have um, too many of our smartest people go into law and finance, um, which is both a, you know, a criticism and a, co and a compliment. Um, but uh, I think we've got too many people in America in law, law and finance. Not that we shouldn't have some, but we've got too many. Um, and there should be more that are doing engineering and manufacturing and building things. 
Um, that, that's, a, that's, I think, a better use of our best talent. Um, so, um, I mean, I certainly have done everything I can to, to promote engineering and, as, as a, and, and building things um, as, a, as a career. I think it's a good career. Um, you know, if you've built a product that uh, someone loves, uh, that you've done a really good thing. Um, and so I think, uh, yeah, and more, more people should do that. Uh, yeah, so. First off, thank you for this amazing opportunity. Um, a forum like this can only exist when and where there is free speech. And thank you so much for bringing that to the forefront in this election because it's absolutely what is on the line. So um, I know this is being live streamed, so if you are at home and you have uh, not registered to vote, please do so, please yes. get out and vote, vote right. early, and please sign the petition at the AmericanPAC.org. Yeah. Um, so thank you, but it sort of leads into my question here. Uh, your positions on fundamental freedoms and government oversight and efficiency are well documented. Are there any other issues important to you that haven't been as widely covered, and how would a second term for President Trump be relevant to those issues? Well, I, I, I try to, you know, like I said, try to be as clear and, and literal as possible. Um, so, you know, like I said, that's, that's why we've got certain basic priorities, uh, you know, like the safe city, secure borders, sensible spending, uh, protection of the Constitution, um, and all of those things are problematic today. Um, so we have to address, sort of just address those fundamental issues or, or nothing else matters. Um, and, uh, and, and like I said, I think um, deregulation actually will, will un unleash a, a new wave of prosperity uh, that is much greater than people realize. Um, you know, if, if, for, for people that are uh, you know, in the audience and out there that are try, try to build things and get things done, you know how difficult it is with, with you know, permits and one agency after another getting in the way, and uh, it, it causes the, the, the prices to rise and, and uh, it, stall, it stalls progress. Um, so I think people don't quite realize just how much prosperity uh, deregulation will bring. Um, you know, the, 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 you know, President Trump in his last term uh, thankfully did, did some amount of that. Um, uh, but the, the last really big push for deregulation um, w was Reagan in the early 80s. Um, and, and that actually brought, that, that, uh, that unleashed a wave of prosperity. It was great. You know, they used to control, like, like airline prices and everything was, was regulated. Um, and it was, it was stifling progress. And uh, Reagan uh, ha had a big deregulation push and it, and it, was, it was amazing. Um, and the 80s were, were great, and 90s were great, <laughs> actually. So, yeah. I mean, I lived through the 80s and 90s, and, and, and they were great. <laughs> so, um, so I think, uh, actually, you, you'll, you'll, see it, 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 you'll see just how, how much better it is if, if uh, progress is not stifled by overregulation. It's, it's really a big deal. Right. Hey, Elon. My name is Dean. I'm an engineering student here in Pennsylvania. Um, I, my family moved out here from my home state of New Jersey because me and my brother were facing some injustices regarding the uh, COVID vaccine mandates a couple years ago. Yeah, those were crazy. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's really nutty. I mean, like, I, I'm, I'm not anti-vaccine, but I'm anti-forcing people to take a vaccine, that's for sure. Well, also, the, um, the COVID vaccine did not work. Yeah, and it's... Yeah, it's, it's uh, and, and suppressing information about it and side effects, that was terrible. Um, so, you know, it, it was like, um, you know, the Biden administration, Biden-Harris administration, uh, tried to mandate that any company that has any federal contracts, which is most companies, uh, have, ha would be forced to va uh, vaccinate everyone at the company or that person would have to be fired. Now, thankfully, that was shot down by the Supreme Court. But, like, that's insane. That, that is a massive infringement on, on your liberty. Yeah, so speaking to you right now, I mean, I recognize the magnitude of it, that I'm grateful for the opportunity to have your ear for a moment. And I wish I could, you know, talk about more than I'm going to be able to talk about right now with you, but I would like to talk, touch on the topic of education reform. I've heard you uh, express in the past some dissatisfaction 
with the way we go yeah. about education today, I found your concept of levels that a student can advance at his own pace yeah. to be compelling. Um, if we include students, teachers, and administrators as occupations, education is the industry that employs the most people in the country. Our brightest minds are usually traversing the education system for their entire youth and early adulthood. Do you think it would be within the scope of the Department of Government Efficiency to try and investigate how we can minimize the misuse of Americans' money and more importantly their time by providing ways to streamline the process, avenues to certify oneself with aptitude tests, and somehow counteract the unproductive arms race of credentials and degrees? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. No, I, I, I think it's, it's pretty nutty, like, um, it, I mean, ironically, from the, if you look at uh, how um, Americans have performed in, uh, you know, in, in academic tests since the establishment of the Federal Department of Education, it's, it's, been, it's been downhill. So, like, why are we spending all this money uh, for about worse results? Um, and then w w there's, a, there's, there's a lot of... The, the money in, 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 uh, in education is actually for pushing propaganda, you know, uh, instead of teaching kids the facts about the world, like, you know, things that are actually useful. So we definitely need to stop the propaganda, the pushing of the propaganda uh, on, in schools um, and teach kids uh, skills that, that, that are actually useful. Um, so, you know, and uh, yeah, I, I'm a big believer in that. So. Hi, Elon. Uh, thanks for taking the time <clears throat> to do this. This is fantastic. My question involves regulation. Tesla full self-driving has the potential to save tens of thousands of lives per year. <clears throat> what do you think are, is the right way for regulators to look at the technology and what factors do they look at to try to get to the goal of unsupervised self-driving? And I've seen its growth over time. I've been a beta tester since the safety score, and 12.5.4.1 drove me here with zero intervention. Cool. Oh. Yeah. Well, I, I think, um, yeah, I, th I think that, it, that, that, that would be a, a good thing for there to be a federal mandate for self-driving. And really, the threshold should just be that, do you have uh, a st 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 statistically significant uh, proof that when the car is in self-driving mode, that uh, the probability of injury is much lower than if it's manually driven. You know, that, like, well, well above the margin of error. Like, let's say it's like, I don't know, 50% or 100% or better uh, with, uh, with a billion miles of driving. So if you've got, you've got a, a large data set uh, and, and clear um, data to back it up, uh, then I think you should obviously allow self-driving um, as soon as it is obviously safer than uh, manual driving. It's pretty straightforward, I think. Hi, Elon. My name is Molly Hughes, and I'm an engineer from Lancaster. And I just want to say thank you for all you've done for free speech. And I realize that's saying almost nothing at all with, in proportion to what it's meant to all of us. Um, my question is, given that Marxist ideology is responsible for the death of 100 million people in the 20th century, why do you think it's making a resurgence, and what can we do to help combat it in our daily lives? Um, I, I mean, I agree with you. It's kind of blowing my mind that, uh, like, I thought that was a dead philosophy, but it's, it's alive and well in a lot of our educational institutions. Um, you know, I, th I think part of it is that you've got these, a, a lot of colleges with these giant endowments uh, that insulate them from reality. So, so you can sort of have this fake communist utopia at a, at a university uh, because they're, they, they don't have any feedback loop to reality with, with, because they've got these, these giant endowments uh, and a ton of government funding, too. So, uh, so, so that, that allows them to be dis disconnected from the realities of um, you know, the free market. Um, they, they take advantage of the, the free market, but they, they, they live in a sort of pseudo-communist world in, in, in a lot of these colleges. So that they, that they just don't get it, um, but but it, it is it is rem remarkable, and there are a lot of memes about this because like how often do we need to run this experiment? You know, um, you know the it it should be very obvious that the uh, the economic structure, the economic philosophy 
that is the good one, is the one that does not need to build walls to keep people in, you know? So <laughs> that's, it's pretty, like, you know, in, in, in North, North, you know, North Korea has to, it builds a wall to keep people in. <laughs> you know, East Germany had to build walls to stop people from going to West Germany. You know, uh, the Berlin Wall was built by East Berlin, not West Berlin. So the philosophy that, that, that has to build a wall to keep people in, that's the bad one, okay? <laughs> um, I don't know how, 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 how it's so obvious. Um, so, um, and yet you see a resurgence of it over and over again. Um, and if, if you study history, I, actually, even in ancient times, this, this was a, you, you see the cycle of, of um, you know, uh, it's, it wasn't, obviously it wasn't called Marxism 2,000 years ago or 3,000 years ago, but, but, but you have this, this back and forth between free market and sort of government and free market and government. And, um, it just seems to be so, the natural cycle of things. Um, so, uh, yeah. But um, obviously I'm a big believer in the free market, which is, the free market is just like, let people buy the things they want to buy and let people make the things they want to make. It's, it's not that complicated. Um, you know? And, and I, I find it bizarre that that people think the government is a solution to things when a government is just a corporation in the limit. The, the government is just the biggest corporation of all with a monopoly on violence. And so if, 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 you're, if you're against corporations, you should be definitely against giving it to a monopolistic corporation with a, with that, that has control over violence. Um, and uh, I mean, you know, there, there, there are good people that work in the government, obviously, but, uh, but, but the government is just, it's just a, we should have the least amount of government um, because it, it, it's, it's an operating system that makes uh, people less of it, like the, their output is dramatically less. So if you can look at, say, the, the output of North Korea versus South Korea. In North Korea, they're starving, and South Korea is extremely prosperous. Uh, West Germany was very prosperous, and East Germany was not. Um, and those are random lines drawn on a map. So, it, it, you know, it, it should be, I don't know, like I said, super obvious what, what the right path is. Um, and, uh, yeah, we, we, you know, uh, competition uh, keeps companies honest. And you, you want companies competing uh, to serve consumers. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously, you know, preaching to converted here, but, uh, yeah. Um, yeah it, it, like, uh, like uh, another way to think of it is, is, is like, is like, is like, 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 you know, almost everyone's been to the DMV, okay? So, you know, the DMV, Department of Motor Vehicles, um, that's the government. And, and, and more government is just the DMV at scale. So, like, how big, do, how much more do you want to give the DMV to do? I would say, like, not, not much, you know? <laughs> so, it's, you know, we should uh, minimize, uh, because it just doesn't have a feedback loop for improvement. Like, if, if you know, if you don't get good service, service from the DMV, they're a monopoly and you, you can't do anything about it. Um, whereas if, there's, if there are companies competing to serve consumers, you can switch your business to the other company. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah. So. Uh, hi, Elon. My name is Rebecca Gilbert. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, my question is, what role do you think AI should play in our democratic republic? And how do you think it can be used to uphold our constitutional freedoms? Um, and what do you think will be the potential consequences of creating AI that is far more intelligent and capable than human beings, um, <laughs> with the exception of you, of course? <laughs> Well, I, I do worry about AI, actually, um, because we are creating an intelligence that ultimately will be far more, more intelligent than any human and ultimately more intelligent than the sum of all humans. Um, so in creating AI, we need to be very careful and like kind of, it's like having a sort of a genius child. You want to have that child grow up with good values. Um, I, I think the most important thing in training AI is that it, it has a, it's rigorously truthful. 
uh, even if, even if the, that, this is very, very important, essential. And, and my concern about a lot of the AIs that are being developed uh, are that they're, they're trained to lie, you know, and in some cases with potentially disastrous consequences. Um, I mean, when, when Google Gemini came out, uh, it, it, you know, people asked, like, which is worse, m misgendering Caitlyn Jenner or global thermonuclear war? And it said, misgendering Caitlyn Jenner. I'm like, that's a problem, guys. Um, because if, if this AI becomes super powerful, it could decide that the best way to avoid misgendering is, is to kill all humans, which makes the probability of misgendering zero. So this is, it's very important to uh, have AI be, be maximally truthful uh, and curious and, and love humanity. Very important. So. Hey, Elon. Uh, I'm the guy with the uh, Dale Earnhardt Cybertruck. If anybody wants to drive it after this, let me know. <laughs> uh, I was recently banned on Facebook for a meme that I shared five years ago. Wow. Completely Seriously? gone. Redi yeah, it's like ridiculous. recently? You can't even talk to people at Facebook. It's insane. Like, uh, my question is, this is pretty serious. I mean, this one. is the kind of crazy thing that it's like, <laughs> what? You know? Five years ago. I'm not even kidding. Uh, I complain about it to, at work all the time. Uh, well, can you imagine how much worse this will be under the sort of Kamala puppet regime? You know, it's it's, it's going to be insane. Crazy. So th yeah. thank you They're for buying Twitter. definitely going to lock me up, that's for sure. <laughs> like, I really appreciate <laughs> you buying Twitter. And like, you share memes on there now, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, my question is... Uh, is, is buying Facebook is impossible. Uh, Zuckerberg has a, 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 an equity structure that ensures that like, his 16th descendant will still control it. <laughs> Lizard man. <laughs> uh, this is pretty serious. Uh, have you ever seen Mark Cuban and Rachel Maddow in, in the same area at the same time? Or no, could I, they possibly I, be the same person? I, I, th I think they, uh, they, might, they might be the same person. Hello, my name is Leslie Lockheed. I'm a senior pastor in the Ministry of Repentance and Holiness. It's a global ministry. And I'm also here as a mother and a grandmother. And I'm also here on behalf of people with disabilities. I'm very um, interested in all of your different inventions. Um, I find them very fascinating, and I'm so grateful that you have that type of compassion. And I really want to thank your mother because I know she's been a part of that yeah. from a no, very my, young age. My mom, and, my mom and my sister are great. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, yeah they're, 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 they're great, great people. And, uh, um, yeah, I mean, I love humanity. I, I think, uh, you know, obviously we're not, we're not perfect and we, we, you know, people do things that are bad at times, but on balance, I, you know, I love humans and I love humanity. So. It's very evident. Yeah. I thank you for your compassion. And now there's a lot of, there are a lot of different issues that are so important to me personally, and I'm sure all of you share them. Um, I've seen just horrendous things in the news from every type of issue, the homelessness, the things that have happened, you know, the hurricane, um, the people in, uh, you know, the Carolinas and yeah. all those six states and the sufferings that is going to continue. I'm very concerned about our fellow Americans there um, and those who are yet, you know, that are going to suffer from other natural disasters that are still in the making. Sure. Um, and those who still haven't recovered from the ones before. Uh, so that's very important. I'm, in, I'm very concerned about the children and the grandchildren and the um, exposures um, that are really impressing, you know, putting impressions upon them to lead them off in the very, very extremely dangerous ways as some of what you've touched on tonight. Um, there's just so many that I can't even mention them all here. But um, I would like to also extend an invitation to you. And I extend this invitation um, to invite you to, um, because we've been commissioned all across the United States of America um, by the leadership in the ministry. Sure. And um, even President Trump, former President Trump, has sent off a letter of invitation to this man of God, and I would like to invite you on behalf of America and on behalf of the ministry to come with us uh, this December 
um, for the Men Guys 7 and to be able to meet him face to face. He is known to be not the richest man on earth, but he is the most influential man on earth. And when he speaks, everybody listens. He always trends oh, okay. number one on every social media platform. So we would All like right. to invite you. All right, well, I, well thank you. I, I appreciate the invitation. Um, I, I wish I could, I guess, teleport myself around and be able to do more things. It is, uh, I have like 17 jobs. Um, but, but, but thank you for the invitation. All right. Hey, Elon, Neil, pleasure to meet you and talk with you. Uh, question about manufacturing. Um, one of the concerns with this election cycle is bringing manufacturing back on shore. Yeah. And I'm just wondering, you have a lot of expertise with this. Um, what do you think it's going to take to make American manufacturing great again? What, what's the government's role in that from your perspective? Well, as, as I mentioned, I think deregulation will, will actually be very helpful. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's like... Uh, borderline impossible to get big projects done. Like you want to build a big factory, it's like extremely difficult to do uh, in the U.S. So I think deregulation will help a lot with that. Um, and uh, you know, I, I, I do think we, we probably need to be sensible about what about tariffs and, and just uh, you know if, if there's if if, if there is uh, um, dumping of goods from other countries, we probably should have tariffs that that uh, you know prohibit that. Um, but I, I think, in general, we, we, should, uh, we should prize manufacturing in the U.S. a lot more. Um, and, and, but, I mean, America still is the second biggest manufacturer in the world, after China. Um, and uh, and I'm, I'm a big fan of manufacturing. Obviously, I built, built a lot of factories. Um, spent a lot of time on the production floor. Um, so, and I think part of it is, like, I think, uh, I don't know, maybe manufacturing became, like, uncool or something. I don't know. Um, but uh, as I was saying earlier, we have way too many people in America in finance and law, and, uh, and I think a bunch of them should, should really be doing manufacturing instead. You know. Uh, hi, Elon. Nice to meet you. Uh, my name is Madsen Snell. I'm 22 years old from York, Pennsylvania. Um, Great. Uh, real briefly, I just want to say that um, before I ask my question, I, I'm really grateful with someone like your status is so outspoken with supporting Trump. And I think we need more people in your status to support Trump because I think you know, we all know there's kind of this agenda in the entertainment industry and in the media where they, they have to hate Trump no matter what. I think my question to you is how much of it do you think is like them living in this bubble, like the late night talk show host, the the, Holly, the people in Hollywood, like the legacy media, how much of that is like them actually thinking Trump is this like evil dictator and how much of it is actually like just them getting paid to say it? Like why is there this huge bias towards the Democratic Party when it comes to the establishment? No, that's a great question and I, I actually don't know the full answer to that but except to say that what your observation is accurate. Um, and um, I mean, it's, I think it's also clear that uh, with a few exceptions, that they they they're really just they're just talking heads, you know. They 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 say whatever the teleprompter tells them to say. Um, so you know that's just you know like there's, I guess, maybe we have too much concentration in media in the country. This you know it's, uh, media is controlled by a handful of people, uh, and kind of their political views filter down to whatever the you know their companies that they own or control. What, what, what they believe. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, but I don't know, I find, I, except, like, I, I can see the results, but I, I, I don't quite understand why it, this, this is happening. Uh, so, I wish I did. Uh, and uh, obviously with acquiring Twitter, that was a, a step to try to correct things and, and, and have the voice of the people actually, you know, Give the people a voice. Um, so, um, but like if you look at, say, uh, uh, contributions by journalists over time um, to Republican or Democrat Party, uh, you know, if, you go, if you go back, say, 20, 30 years, uh, it was much more balanced where there would be, I don't know, a third of journalists would donate to the Republican Party, two-thirds would be Dem, and now it's like 5% of journalists 
donate to Republicans, 95 are, um, you know, uh, do donate to Democrats, which, which obviously leads to a tremendous amount of bias. Um, I, I think also, like, uh, a lot of... Uh, activists have gone into journalism uh, not to report the news, but to create the news. Um, and uh, I have to say, like, well, where does that come from? I think probably that comes from what they're taught in schools. I'm trying to, like, you know, trace, like, trace route, like, you know, packets on a network. Where did this, what's the origin of this? Um, and I think if people are taught, you know, BS propaganda in schools, uh, then they want it, they, 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 and, and they're told that this is the thing they should go out in the world and, and, and push, then, then you, I think that's, it's, it starts with the education system, I think. You know, and certainly that is a thing to be addressed. So. Hi, Elon. My name is Janine. I'm from central Pennsylvania. And tonight you've mentioned many times how important it is that we get out there, we register, we vote, we convince our friends, families, acquaintances to get out there and vote. In my orbit, I have too many people that just refuse to vote for Trump because his personality isn't appealing to them, but they say it much more colorfully, of course. Yes, yes. So my ask to you is... How can I very simply connect the dots between what's at risk here with this next election for a rural central Pennsylvania person who doesn't really see what's happening in the big city? So right. for me, the money shot is how this is going to impact them every single day. Right. <clears throat> well, I, th I think we, we you know, um, to the degree that people say like or dislike a candidate, they really need to sort of step back and say what you're actually electing is uh, sort of a, a, a Republican administration or a, a Democratic administration. Um, and there's this massive changing of the guard that takes place depending on which side is elected. Uh, so, um, you know, whether or not somebody likes Trump as a person um, or not, uh, first of all, I, I think they should definitely look into a lot of the things that they've been told about Trump, because I think a lot of the stuff that they've been told about Trump is, is not true. Um, you know, so... You know, uh, I mean, e even in the presidential debate, uh, Kamala had the nerve to push the fine people hoax, claiming that Trump was pro-Nazi, which is insane. And in fact, in, in that, the, sp the speech she's quoting, he actually condemned Nazis in the, in the strongest possible terms, and yet she still pretended in that presidential debate that he endorsed Nazis. That's a huge lie. And so if somebody's under the impression that Trump is like somehow pro-Nazi, even though his son-in-law is Jewish, <laughs> and he has Jewish grandkids, which would be pretty bizarre, um, then, then you can say like, actually, that's a hoax. And uh, now that, I'm not, by the same token, I'm not, I'm not trying to claim that, you know, uh, Trump is a flawless individual. Uh, you know, I, 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 I like him personally, uh, but, but we have to look beyond that and say, what are the important policies that will ensure uh, that the country is on the, on the right track? Um, so, and, you know, I, I think if you say, like, well, you know, for a lot of people, like, uh, are, are, do you feel safer walking around the streets, or do you feel less safe? And when I talk to people, they feel a lot less safe. Uh, do you feel comfortable with an open border policy where anyone can come across, even if they're uh, a, a serial killer? Well, I, no, that, that's very uncomfortable, actually. Um, do, you feel, do you feel that we should preserve the, the Constitution? I think, yes, we should. Uh, freedom of speech is very important. Um, and... Uh, you know, if you, you say, like, well, do you, you agree with these policies? I think the answer is, I think, for a reasonable person, it's going to be yes. And then it's like, well, then you need to sort of look past what you believe the individual, you know, whatever flaws you believe the individual has, and say that there are larger issues at stake uh, than, than what, what, you, you know, what you may think about the individual, which also may be wrong, what you think about the individual. So, um, and, you know, my, my view about this election is that it, it's... I, th I think there's, this is most likely the last real election. Um, because what, what I see happening um, is that 
the Dem administration is, is, is bringing in vast numbers of illegals del deliberately into swing states. Uh, the, the numbers, if you say like uh, over the past three and a half years, I, I think it's like there's like a 500% increase in illegals in swing, swing states. What a coincidence. Um, now, when, when you look at, at margins of victory that may be 10, 20,000 votes, and then you bring in 200,000 illegals and you legalize them, which is exactly what the, the sort of Kamala puppet regime will do uh, over the next four years, then you, you won't have any swing states. Every state will go blue. Um, and, at, at that, and, and, and then we don't have a democracy. We, have a, we, have, we will be a single party state. And they're doing it in Pennsylvania, big time. So um, that's why I think if, 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 if Trump is not elected, I think this is the, the last election where we have, we have a two-party state. And uh, yeah, so. And, and, and one doesn't need to actually say, oh, well, this is a, a conspiracy. Just, just think about simple incentives. Um, the, the, you, you have a Democratic Party that, that wants to win, and the path to winning is bringing in large numbers of illegals, and especially to swing states, and then uh, legalizing them so they can vote. And then that, that's what happened in California. And when they did it in California, California went supermajority Dem, and California has been a one-party state uh, ever since the uh, you know, amnesty in the, the late 80s. Um, Essentially, one-party state. At this point, it's supermajority Dem. The, the only competition that occurs is, the, is at the Democratic primary. So that's that's not a real democracy at that point. So this is the last chance. This this, this election's last chance. Yeah. Hello, Mr. Elon Musk. My name is Grant Hoffman. I'm an Air Force veteran, a father of two wonderful boys. Um, as they come up into an age where they start going to school, do you think it's concerning how public school students are graduating and don't have any understanding about how the government works or what the Constitution is at all? I just sat through a college course yeah. and they had no idea what the Constitution was. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, I think we need to teach kids uh, useful skills and, and we need to teach them critical thinking and, and history um, and, and why the Constitution is important. Why, you know... Um, I, I mean, in, in a, a lot of schools, uh, you know, kids are, these days are taught to hate America, which is just crazy, you know? So that's got to stop. Yeah. Hi, Elon. Um, welcome to Pennsylvania. Thank you. And welcome to the right side of history. We are all very grateful that you are on the right side of history. And I'm, I, know, I don't know if you watch Trump rallies. I watch it all the time. In every single rally, he talks about you. In every single rally. Well, the, the, you know, I mean, the, the mutual admiration society here. Uh, yeah. So I, I'm, uh, I like Trump a lot, and uh, I'm glad he likes me too. <laughs> and thank you so much for everything you did for the people affected by Helene. Absolutely. Hurricane Helene. Thank you so much. Yeah. It was heartbreaking. Thank you so much. Of course. And uh, my question is actually pretty similar to this gentleman here. Um, back in 2020, well, I, I was at Oaks last night, and you said when you see, see something, you say something. Yeah. And back in 2020, a lot of people saw something, and they did say something. But it just never went to the judges. Like, the cases were never heard. Yeah. And... What I want to know, is, is there anything that the Republicans are doing right now that is going to be differently, you know? That are we going to like actively trying, you know, if somebody doing something, actively putting these cases to the judges so, you know, we can preserve the elections and the freedom in America. Is there anything they're doing differently this time around? Well, this time around, uh, the X platform is not going to suppress any information uh, that, uh, yeah. So, you know, if, if, if there's any evidence of, of election fraud, uh, post it on the platform and uh, be as loud as possible. Um, and if you, if you got, put, put, put as much evidence as possible out there and, and let's shine a big light. Um, and the brighter the light, the, the, less, uh, the harder it will be to cheat. So.
All right, I'll, I'll take a, a few more questions and, and then call it a night. Hi, um, my name is Rebecca, and I just wanted to say thank you for, um, I don't know, like going in front of people and no, like being sort of awkward. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? No, well, I mean, yeah. like I have. I mean, these are real time questions. This is obviously I'm, scripted. I'm, so it's I'm, like I have to like think for a second, like, oh, what? I don't so always like, have so a like, great so answer because like, I just like, I just heard the question. <laughs> so. So I'm I'm autistic and um, gro growing the club. up as a girl, yeah, <laughs> gr growing up as as a girl on the spectrum was definitely super hard um, <clears throat> because we kind of whatever it doesn't matter. But my whole question is about AI. Okay. Um, essentially, there I feel like there's like two ways you could like develop AI um, where it could be some, come sentient. And if you sort of like develop AI to become sentient and it's like a programmed thing, you're basically creating like a slave. So therefore, uh, my question to you is, would you be able or willing to promise to um, only develop AI into like a sentient being it, it, like through a simulation uh, of like hu human existence so that it can actually experience what it might feel like to be a real human. And speaking of the simulation, um, perhaps that's what we are. Perhaps we're the AI going oh, yeah, through the yeah, simulation. Yeah. And with that, sure. our consciousness level could possibly be related to, like it could be like correlate directly to the um, amount of tech that we're allowed to have. So if you want to like move past combustion, um, perhaps we have to like work on the inside of humanity, which is like developing the actual consciousness first. Yeah. I'm not sure how to answer that exactly, but I, I think uh, the m most, most important, we, we, I think we, we, we're developing digital super intelligence. We want to make sure it, uh, it is, you know, results in a, in a better future. Um, and uh, I, I do think probably at, at some point the AI will be sentient or indistinguishable from sentience. Um, and, um, you know, so... I don't know what, quite what to do about it, except to, to try to try our best to make, make good AI. Um, and like I said, rigorous pursuit of the truth is a most fundamental uh, for AI safety. Uh, so. I'll, just I'll take uh, you know, um, one more question. Thank you. Um, I just want to thank you for the, the format today. Uh, this is a big breath of fresh air, I'm sure, for a lot of people to be able to ask questions and kind of control what's being said. Um, my question is, um, so our tax dollars are being used for <laughs> billions of tax dollars to aid in conflicts that many of us don't support, yeah. while our governments have helicopters rotor-washing civilian aid camps in North Carolina, thanks to the X platform, we get to see that. Um, FEMA is reportedly threatening charges on neighbors that are helping to rebuild their own communities as well. We have the Department of Defense issuing Directive 5240, which uh, in at least some capacity allows the federal government to direct the military to operate in a law, law enforcement capacity against its citizens, which is unconstitutional, I think many would say. Um, how do you believe that you and the Trump administration can help us with the lack of accountability and improve trust in the federal government? Well, I think, first of all, let's, I think we should have a lot less federal government. Um, you know, because a lot of times the, the government just gets in the way. Um, and, and, and you get these sort of Kafkaesque, like, bizarre situations where, um, you know, FEMA will operate under some rule where, like, they're, they assume responsibility for an area and then they, in their rule set, they then, because they have responsibility for, the, for an area, they prevent others from helping, even though they are, in some cases, not helping. So you get this... So the, you know, I think the, the way to, like, this is have a lot, a lot less government. I think the citizens are capable of, of helping each other, um, and, and the government certainly should not stand in the way of people helping each other. That's really crazy. Um, so, and, and I think just, just being, on the being on the ground and, and just like, um, you know, uh, you just need to be on the ground. At, if, if there's an emergency, uh, you know, you want the head of Homeland Security to be uh, on the ground where the disaster is, not shopping for expensive clothing in New York, which... <laughs> so, I'll, I'll take one, one, one last question and then call it a night, but yeah. Thank you, Elon. Mark Clark from Camp Hill. Uh, thank you for being our brave heart 
for free speech. Well, I hope I don't have the same ending as Braveheart. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, freedom. <laughs> but for the first time in my life, uh, a long span of voting every election day, I voted early this week. Great. And, Thank you. Uh, uh, please my, encourage everyone to vote early and, yeah, get registered, yeah. My question is, aside from what you said about self-driving cars, what's your stance on government mandates for electric vehicles? Yeah, I, I, I actually generally think that there should not be gov government mandates. Um, I, I'm, you know... Uh, I'm generally against uh, incentives and tax breaks and, and these for, for all industries. So whether you know, uh, I mean, there's there are lots of incentives and tax breaks in oil and gas as well. Um, you know, I think we should just not have them. We should just get the government out of things and and, and let the market uh, you know figure it out. Um, so I'm, I'm generally against government mandates. Uh, so yeah. Um, all right, with, with that, uh, I'd like to, to thank you all for coming. Uh, it's been an honor to speak with you. And, um, yeah. So. Freedom!